Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this day in the last video in the morning these videos come in the evening the MCQ videos come and after uh, four days I am uh, taking these lessons because some throat problem I was having so I could not uh, record these lessons. Now we will discuss very crucial issues. Some brilliant, some unconventional articles are there today like one is there on the uh, ethical issue, one is there on the academic excellence issue and these are great ones for you for the mains stage mainly for the gs paper 4 gs paper, paper 1 and the essay paper these are very important ones. so let's start the lesson and uh, the 60 percent off is going on this is the crucial time after that you cannot miss any day and uh, it's the high time that you reorganize your preparation your uh, your uh, study management everything uh, whatever is applicable here and Think about uh, your way, meditate on your preparation and then just do not stop till the next year's phase. And uh, uh, these courses are certainly going to help static person you need to cover before December because after that you just uh, will be revising things and uh, before December you need to complete your, uh, your optional also. So it's a very busy time and here in this time you need that robust uh, uh, preparation regarding to the current uh, current issues because they will shape your thinking they will shape your answer writing they will shape your interview preparation and this interview pre preparation is not a separate pre preparation it's not a, a mock test or something like that that you will give uh, before the examination it is going on every day something is added in your mind something uh, uh, as a capacity is uh, there in your mind which is being added daily so these are very important ones and here these courses are going to help a lot so it's an opportunity 60% off is going on and uh, you can visit the website and these numbers are important pocket news app is trending and the description has been below the video these are the numbers you can call on PDF you will get here and uh, telegram channels link you will also get there you can follow me on instagram too and these are some words that i found today now about the article first article by navrita chada Bera. she talks again about the kashmir issue we have been having these articles as i told you on 5th of august that many many articles we will have uh, on kashmir uh, in this whole month so these are uh, coming and again these are the issues but you see the real essence and the real importance in this current scenario we need to understand there are some crucial issues of accountability ethics and morality for that particular thing i will take one article before all of them let's see this is uh, giving an example of artificial intelligence okay it's a small article but uh, the thing that it talks about that's very crucial and that is about the ethics and its types you see it talks about uh, uh, the issue of a uh, utilitarianism you all know about that sorry utilitarianism so james mill we all know about the about the person when we study the british uh, uh, colonial history of india then this issue was applicable there utilitarianism says that there must be the maximum good for public means the inclusion should be maximum and the good must be maximum for all this is one way you must have heard about uh, that inclusive development uh, sabka saath and sabka vikas these kind of schemes these are based on these kind of ideologies but you see today it's a time when we focus more on announcements symbols and iconic things and the detailing and the follow-up of all these uh, proper ideas is not that much strong these schemes talk about uh, uh, utility utilitarianism but they hardly follow those things then talking about inclusiveness with this issue they will talk about the consequentialism uh, consequentialism also because there is a way in ethics that is called consequentialism means consequences are important the results the ways and means so there are two things ways and means 
inconsequentialism means are important means whatever you do whatever way you decide whatever you follow but the result must be good and the result must be in favor of the uh, uh, public at large so that's the case of consequentialism so in these schemes they talk about it in the starting but later they miss this part of consequences and these things are hardly discussed only a visionary thinking can talk about the consequences and the accountability today what is missing the most and that is accountability so many schemes so many announcements we have seen but what about the uh, ethical issue of accountability where is that you promise jobs but you do not talk about those issues when the time comes about the scrutiny and the evaluation some other national security issue that comes up and everything is sidelined and diverted so that is the way in the uh, uh, different article of uh, sri lanka they are talking about strong manship that the new election will be uh, based on these uh, security issues and uh, the majority minority issues because gotamaya rajapaksha the newly uh, proposed person for the president's post and he is the brother of mahinda rajapaksha and uh, uh, mahinda thinks that he will become pm and his brother gotamaya will will become president sri lanka is a presidential system so their image is of strong men so strong men means who is strong men today that is the thing to be discussed because in all the countries if you talk about india if you talk about sri lanka if you talk about france if you talk about america everywhere these strong menship is uh, in trend and here these are the leaders where they are liked too much by the majority and by some group they are hated very uh, much means they never like these leaders because they see the other side and the majority that see that sees the other side of it but issues are very controversial means for all these leaders their history their working their work their ways and all everything is controversial whether we talk about trump or any other leader so these kind of uh, uh, ways this kind of politics we are observing means they divert the topics and everything comes to the national security in america there are issues of outsiders and uh, openly trump is uh, making racist remarks and uh, uh, threatening uh, the colored people and all uh, saying that uh, uh, leave america and go to your home countries and all these kind of things we have seen on communal lines on religious lines on caste lines india is also very much divided and in the opinions also ideologies also india is heavily divided and a bombardment of uh, Uh, trolls we have seen so country divided in uh, sri lanka also similar kinds of scenes are there easter attack uh, was there and after that what happened after that everything is diverted towards the security issue nationalistic issue always elections are happening in recent years in all these countries whether we talk about brazil whether we talk about colombia whether we talk about venezuela anywhere these kind of leaders are in much trend who are taking uh, a those debates where normal public cannot tell much means in kashmir issue in india pakistan issue in uh, other security issues or in other uh, foreign relations what public can tell and who is this public what kind of knowledge they have india and whole world is facing a intellectual crisis as i explained to you in some article so normal public cannot tell in those topics and those sensitive topics are raised by these kind of strong men uh, and these leaders and they are winning the elections every time and with their election with their with, with their working and every time when we have a security situations and at that time the issue that we started in the topic that accountability that goes off that is vanished from the uh, from the public public platform and people forget to ask the questions about the consequences and the Uh, accountability so the consequentialism is not there in uh, in practical sense and if we talk about the divisions in the society that means utilitarianism is also not properly implemented so what is actually going on writer says uh, giving this example of artificial intelligence uh, where uh, in america it was uh, created by google and it was about to recognize people on their facial recognition basis so Caucasian Americans, which which are uh, 
originally white people and uh, who settled America uh, in very starting years. So it recognizes them very easily. Around 72.4% people are Caucasian Americans. Rest of the people, they are hardly recognized by this technology. So artificial intelligence is ap applied there, but it is not recognizing them and it creates a divide there. And that's a visible scene there. Now, if you talk about uh, example in South America where Polaroid's ID2 cameras were introduced in 1960s and it was taking a very quality pictures of uh, darker skin. So in this way, they created a group who were buying this camera very passionately, these black people. And ultimately it led to the apartheid there in uh, South Africa because there was a, a identification document called Dompa that was based on that uh, camera data. And this way it led to apartheid means the society was divided means you applied a technology there there also some ethical issues there so this article is based on the artificial intelligence and the ethical uh, context of that but here the writer talks about the types of ethics like the uh, utilitarianism consequentialism and the deontological ethics deontological ethics talks about the duty means the morality must be followed we do not know what consequences it will have but the ways and the uh, and the uh, style you follow that must be moralistic highly moralistic and the duty moralistic duty must be fulfilled whatever consequences we will have so that is the issue of duty and deontological ethics first of all clearly a single phenomena cannot be followed in democracies that is that is uh, clearly there but when the issue of accountability is not there and some divergence we see uh, popularly then there are questions of ethics means we know one type of ethics cannot be implemented but it is not like that that no ethics in practical sense you are following there you are not even following utilitarianism you are not even following uh, the the uh, the consequentialism not even you are following dual ontological ethics means you are not fulfilling the moral duties there now some people will think that i am diverting the topic i am and i am uh, uh, ranting here but please understand this is about finding the common ground between these topics from uh, this artificial intelligence issue we can connect this article we can connect to jammu kashmir issue because there the writer is talking about what it is talking about the issues that we have discussed much but you can see weakening federalism accommodative parameters demographic impact what are these these are the issues of consequences consequentialism you will find here and the way it uh, it is applied here the way the book of has become a, as a union territory then it is the case of uh, uh, adopting right ways and moralistic duty also but there are questions because they say that maybe we are following a uh, a tough path here and it is a troublesome time for Kashmiris today but tomorrow it will be a better future so there they are applying the consequential uh, uh, nihilism so consequences they are talking about and they are saying that uh, uh, we are not following the right duty here so dual ontological ethics are not applied here here what is applied that is consequentialism means the way they are adopting here some questions are there because there can be different consequences so consequences are also important okay so sometimes they say that uh, oh, whatever we are deciding we will have uh, proper consequences but the symptoms tell a different story they say that there can be different consequences means uh, uh, you are citing the security issues here but you are weakening the federalism issue also in the constitution because no state have been declared as union territory till now but now it is done and it, it is more a centralizing tendency means whatever consequences you are citing there can be different consequences means actually it must be the case of uh, dual ontological ethics means you must follow the right duty right path today means the way you must follow here in tackling the Kashmir situation that should be the proper way because you cannot tell the consequences here these things are not in your control but here they are adopting a way where they are only talking about consequences but these consequences are not sure it is not sure that they will better manage the society in Kashmir. 
that means there are serious questions on the ethical basis here so ethics is having different types it's a part of your uh, syllabus of your gs paper for these all ethical types uh, ethics types uh, you need to un understand there and uh, these are important ways which will be crucial in your uh, uh, examination and in your work life in uh, democracy in system everywhere these ethics are applicable so that's why when we discuss current scenario uh, and these uh, crucial uh, sensitive issues on ethical basis then the real scrutiny comes and there is a different angle of understanding the things because common things we have discussed too much but there is a reason that i have clubbed these ethical part with this uh, 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 with this uh, article because in the mains questioning they will ask you that discuss the ethical background of this decision of turning jammu kashmir into a union territory they may ask you about that then you need to explain those things because at that time you must have uh, completed your gs paper for syllabus also so on that basis they will ask you because it's it's also a case study for discussing ethical part so that's why i am clubbing this topic and it's a very very important topic please do not take it as a rant as you always say that you are ranting here you are not uh, 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 discussing the topic here i am discussing the topic these are simple things we have discussed many many times but that aspect is very important okay so try to understand these things maybe you will find them boring but uh, these are important go through the questioning in the last 3 4 years in the mains examination as gs paper 1 2 3 4 you will understand the uh, the the way i am i am explaining to you now here the writer says one thing is good that they are pursuing a hard top down approach we all know about that and they say that uh, we are having a dialogue till the grassroots level panchayat elections they conducted last year but it's a good thing that first time the central government is directly connected with the panchayat bodies and all and they are conducting these issues through uh, the way of governor and all so that's good and these uh, mediators and these separatist leaders and all they are not discussed that is a good thing that was uh, 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 something that must have been done but the way they are adopting here it may have a different consequences why because they are hiding some facts here what is the fact in these elections out of 2135 uh, halkas or village clusters 1400 they boycotted these elections they never voted in these elections means it's a clear case of uh, deny it's a clear case of uh, uh, it's, it's a clear case of uh, not getting involved in this systematic approach that they are applying here means their way is not perfect and that is failure in a sense because out of 2100 1400 they are boycotting these elections means how they can create a leadership from the grassroots level where most of the people they are boycotting those elections means they do not have any faith and they are showing their disbelief there so that that can be a big problem here and that is the biggest ethical issue here that the way that you have adopted is it going to achieve the proper means so it is the case of ways and means okay because there is a issue of aim achieving what is the aim that uh, settle the kashmir so solution so the situation there and bring a proper solution there so that's the case all other part is a repeated part you can uh, go through that even uh, with a single reading you will understand all the issues okay next strongman candidate as i explained to you that sirisena vikram singh a combination which was there since 15 that has not worked much and does not seem to have done enough to revive the economy or introduce political and economic reforms so that's why people were uh, uh, in a way you may say dis disoriented disillusioned about their working so that's why some confusions were there and in that particular time easter attacks they happened now the whole issue the accountability everything is shifted towards national security issue and this is also a religious angle so the uh, so the consequence is that the majority minority question is again raised and in Sri Lanka there used to be a civil war situation before 2009 and at that time some leaders were there some people were there who were managing the situation and uh, 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 as the former defense secretary mr gotamaya 
राजा पक्षा हु इज ब्रदर ऑफ महिंद्र राजा पक्षा ही इज कॉल्ड फ्रॉम अमेरिका ही हैज रिनाउंस हिज अमेरिकन सिटीजनशिप नाउ ही विल बी हियर एंड ही इज फेमस फॉर हिज क्रशिंग defeat on these liberation tigers in 2009 so he was a, a fierce uh, leader at that time this kind of image he has and now as i explained to you these kind of strong men candidates are becoming very popular whether we talk about the maduro situation in venezuela and uh, whether we talk about america whether we talk about india everywhere these kind of uh, politics uh, and this this kind of uh, what we say right wing politics is up front apparently and and in this situation again we see that next elections will be there on these lines only people will only be uh, caring and they will be sensitive about the security situation because they will exploit this situation and uh, these kind of uh, performers in these kind of sensitive situations they will be the popular choice there and that's why it has become a new way every time when there are elections then there are very sensitive issues in america you see the situation of uh, uh, korea iran and the mexican situation all are sensitive issues normal public cannot tell their opinions about those because they are not the expertise and if you are not expertise then you should not talk about the jammu kashmir situation you should not talk about the bilateral situation that is a common case and here these leaders they are talking openly about those things because there is a freedom of speech so they can talk about these things but the people they do not know so many times they misinform the public and they show that we are the righteous choices and others are the uh, thieves here others are the looters here and uh, whoever is ruling uh, in the past they who were were managing the situation in the past those all were totally inefficient and we will be the most working ones here and then they control the media and then they uh, uh, spread these kind of messaging so this is the issue of strong man candidature here when mahindra raja paksa was uh, installed last year supreme court of uh, uh, sri lanka that again removed him because uh, it was not proper to choose him in this way so now this election is going to be very very fierce and it was a major attack and that is all capturing the sri lanka situation so that is the case so sensitive issues always what is happening in uk brexit is happening what is brexit Bre- brexit is is something that is destroying the time of uk and they have been extending this issue for the last 5 7 years and no solution is there something that they cannot get solution of but it is all politics they want to pass the time and uh, it's it's a great issue whole politics is based on that issue so that's why all the mischievous activities all the uh, uh, adventures and all we have seen in that s- similar topic nothing as they need to maintain their situation of employment uh, situation of economy is questionable there but not much scrutinies are available with those topics because they are discussing brexit there so this way a lot of divergences are there for these accountability issues now what is the solution solution is there in the next article this article you must read here the solution i'm talking about this is this article important for uh, all the topics 1 2 3 4 anything you say because it is applicable in society applicable in governance applicable in uh, uh education and all the ways that we adopt gs paper 4 case studies and the very very important topic for essay what it talk what it talks about it talks about parallel state of academic freedom why academic freedom is important you see india was the vishwa guru because the knowledge started from here as we all know why because people were so practical logical and uh, they were having scientific minds they were not following something blindly they were experimenting they were applying these uh, philosophies in their life something which is said about indian philosophy is that indian philosophy is not some something as a subject that we study it was the part of india's lifestyle it was applied practically in the life 
people were living philosophy at that time and that was the greatest thing the most practical thing and we are far far away from that particular way we are talking about those times we are talking about vedic times we are talking about our sanskriti culture and all but we are so foolish that we do not even understand the practical aspect of that time why that time became important because people were scientific at that time people were logical at that time they were not following something blindly they were not talking about their past they were inventing in those times buddha became important why because he thought about those rituals and he thought about the realities of life he roamed around the, the, this world and uh, he came to know about the truths of the life even today that thing is applicable totally it is true that trishna is the main reason of all the pains all the problems because the person finds it most difficult to control the urges so that's why this is a sustainable idea this will go on till the humanity will be there whether we may live in a very different world the world is of uh, a uh, fast information wifi unimaginable things the movement is very fast and all these kind of things were not there in the uh, uh, in the ancient uh, times but the issue of urges the issue of satisfaction the human values they remain and they will sustain till till the, till, 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 uh, till the time we are alive here on this earth so that's why those were practical ideas and those practical learnings those were called real knowledge knowledge came from where suppose if somebody would have said buddha that do not discuss or think in this way only this way is acceptable here and the vedic culture is our culture and do not go away from that think within the molds of this uh, system do you imagine we would have known buddha by today no because it was uh, not any restriction no no philosophy whether it was orthodox or non orthodox none of them restricted any other one and that was the biggest beauty it was the diverse thinking of indians that made us the vishwa guru but we are behaving in a so foolish way today and it is all politics it is all the case of survival means the people who are in the politics they want to survive so how do they unite people in such a diverse country how do they unite people that's why that they are doing trials they are trying to impose monocultures and all they are trying to impose particular ideologies and all and actually they are not even following their uh, well said ideologies because ideologies are always based on some thoughts in on some uh, truth and practicalities but nothing seems to be practical in today's politicians ways that's why it is all about being opportunistic and then they talk about uh, uh, then they uh, talk about these uh, inclusiveness and uh, achieving big aims sensitive issues security issues everything they are talking where normal, normal public cannot give opinions and what is this normal public who are the normal people who are the majority these are the people totally stressed in their lives they are uh, a maximum of them are engaged in their works work is the biggest challenge surviving in the employment is the biggest challenge anyhow they are uh, uh, pushing their lives and some are doing achievements great achievements but most of them they are not doing so so the majority remains unsatisfied and frustrated and many many challenges are there consistently so these are the people who are making the population the majority so these kind of people they do not have expertise hardly 1% of them they are interacted with real books the books by great scholars they are their knowledge their sources are dependent on these uh, uh, popular news media houses and uh, third class printing which is there they are all committed towards uh, the powerful uh, politicians and all so this is all they have they do not have inventions in their thinking they do not have uh, creative ways they do not have real knowledge they are just blind followers and this is the name of majority here whether we talk about india whether we talk about sri lanka whether we talk about venezuela whether we talk about brazil whether we talk about america there are these kind of uh, majorities they are busy in their lives they are not uh, the people who are scrutinizing the issues we are preparing for the civil service that's why we are discussing these issues in so depth but normal public is not doing so 
when these kind of leaders strong men they are telling something about the economy then they will believe and the media houses they will run these agendas and they will try to scrutinize these things in their biased manners the same things will be taken by the normal public by the majority and they will all be a part of a big game so this is the way that accountability is missing why because the academic freedom and the intellectual freedom is missing intellectual crisis remains and when in a country like india which was the vishwa guru this is this kind of stage is there and that's why we see inequality there that's why we see these kind of challenges are there that uh, uh, people are struggling a lot economy is struggling a lot but still in the media we see all celebrations and all these great things because people have become so foolish that they do not practice the knowledge they do not believe in peaceful debates and you see whenever there are restrictions on debates whenever there are restrictions on uh, uh, critical thinking that means it is the end of the knowledge there why it doesn't matter what you are what you are discussing there can be any kind of discussions there can be discussions on the uh, ways of terrorism also you should not restrict that because people are trying to understand something out of that that what is the reason of those those kind of ways why people are resorting to those kind of lifestyles so there can be any kind of discussions there can be any kind of ideological discussions but these are discussions peaceful discussions that cannot be suppressed but these are being suppressed and a particular monoculture is being uh, uh, imposed on universities and especially on the youth youth makes the population today in india more than 65% people are youth and those those are controlled by these provocative ideas what sub social media these kind of revolutions are going on and these are heavily used to manipulate the youth and uh, they are totally brainwashed today the way they are behaving the way they are uh, uh, talking about uh, those issues and you see the scholars the kind of scholars we have today these are not scholars they are agenda runner runners actually because scholars they never talk about the revenge and today's scholars so called scholars uh, which are actually uh, not even uh, eligible to to be interacted with public but they are spreading hate they are talking about the past they are giving evidences of thousands of years back history they are giving evidences uh, the of the time which was 5 600 years back but they do not know about the situation which was there three days ago they cannot tell about the present but they can tell about the past they can give all the evidences they know what gandhi said what patel said what nehru said what was the thinking of the nehru what things uh, patel could not express what things that uh, uh, that were hidden in the personality what things that some leader could not say something like that so they are so great antaryamis that they can tell you everything about the past but they cannot tell you about the present why economy is struggling why jobs why there is a huge job loss why uh, the automobile sector is uh, uh, struggling a lot why we are not able to come out of the banking crisis they cannot tell you anything about that but they can tell you about those ideologies those ways those decisions which were so crucial they can tell you who became prime minister who could not become prime minister what happened at that time they are so great under yamis they can tell you about that this is intellectual crisis why why these kind of scholars uh, so called scholars are there because people are so uh, weak in their intellectual sense that these kind of uh, quacks are washing the brains today and youth the youth that doesn't know maximum number of youth they are uh, influenced by these uh, Uh, popular medias and uh, facebooks and whatsapps and uh, these uh, third class indian uh, news media channels and all and they are busy in some nonsensical activities and all because jobs are not there they are also not very much hard working very less students are hard working they are achieving their goals but most of them the majority they are behaving in a foolish way and that's why these people are easily influenced by these kind of Uh, uh provoking leaders who are disguised in the in the label of uh, uh, scholars and uh, thinkers and they are they are 
trying to pose themselves as think tanks of this country new think tanks of this country and the real think tanks they are suppressed they are arrested their books are banned they cannot discuss these issues they are having uh, death threats and all this is all a case of a perilous state of academic freedom and the intellectual crisis you can see you see the example of Vivian Richards Vivian Richards was a, was a great player of cricket, cricket at that time mainly the test cricket uh, people used to play so if we uh, discuss Vivian Richards today it's not a subjective opinion that uh, he was a great player we have learned about Vivian Richards uh, that he was a great player out of the experience of decades when we are playing cricket we know about that uh, we, we know that uh, this kind of uh, shots were great this kind of uh, balls are very tough to handle but Vivian Richards used to play them very easily and he hitted the ball uh, in a in an inefficient way and when we discuss test cricket, cricket these debates are there these discussions are there then we know that he was really a great player it was not somebody's subjective opinion it was all out of those experiences so out of all the, those debates we came to know about this truth and this truth cannot be challenged anywhere the time the cricket will uh, remain there then we will Richards will be a great player so this was not the subjective opinion this was established by collective judgment of the greats of the international cricket that's case and today if somebody says that uh, do not play test cricket do not talk about test cricket do not uh, discuss and uh, and uh, debate those uh, test cricket moves and those uh, issues then who will remember even Richards no because he uh, didn't play T20 crickets and if you say that only T20 will, will be allowed from today then uh, uh, first of all you have destroyed the spirit, spirit of the cricket because you are imposing particular way and then you are uh, uh, vanishing those debates from the scene then people will automatically forget Vivian Richards this way people are forgetting the real academics and real think tanks and the real uh, critical thinking in universities because they are interacted with these kind of uh, uh, quacks these kind of uh, unreliable and uh, unsustainable opinions and actually these free debates the free academia the free opportunities to discuss the most sensitive ones those things are necessary these are the spirits of the universities but those things they uncover the facts and they will tell you what is going on something where uh, some people may uh, may may be fooling you and these uh, uh, these uh, debates these opinions and these writings will expose those uh, quacks and those uh, so called uh, what we must say that uh, they, these are uh, frauds in a sense these are not real think tanks but these discussions will tell you but these discussions are being suppressed today specific type of uh, uh, syllabus is being imposed something uh, like uh, you know, which can be critical which can be sensitive which can be harming to their political ideologies those things are being removed and additional things are being added there which are supporting their moves so we can have many many things and syllabus syllabuses are being attacked they are being changed today so that is the way that they are destroying the culture of knowledge they are destroying the culture of intellect in this country and what's going to happen in the future what is what will be the consequence here we talk about the consequentialism first of all this is not a moralistic duty so the dear ontological ethics is failed here next the consequentialism when people will not have their original thinking they will not be very strong in their intellectual approach then they will be dependent on these third class fraud uh, media houses and their opinions will be so weak and they will be dependent always and always these strongmen, these leaders or these fraud thinkers and all whatever they will tell you they will believe that blindly and this is happening with the majority of the country or uh, uh, all over the world if we talk about and that's why these kind of leaders are very much able to influence the public because public is not capacitated they do not have intellectual capacity uh, there so that's why the judgment is very perilous and here the patiently acquired skills case learning gives you skills and patiently when you are discussing issues then you acquire those skills so the patiently acquired skills and the practices of all such knowledge producing and knowledge transmitting agents teachers researchers students 
they protect 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 the real freedom of the society but here what is there today it is the corporate culture corporatization of the education we have seen and this is happening with so much intensity and the uh, and the uh, and the way it is happening in india this is disastrous means this knowledge it has become a commodity it is not a real knowledge it's a commodity students are the consumers universities and colleges are the sellers and these uh, uh, people who are controlling their ways means uh, they are uh, real owners of these universities which are uh, mainly the corporate corporateers and the big business people or the politicians they will control their ways their syllabuses their ways uh, the way they will handle these students and all and the way they will sell their knowledge they are actually a, a commodity so in the same way these students come consumers they will get these things and what 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 we can expect as productive from these exercises nothing this is all a waste exercise it is all a destruction of the knowledge and knowledge destroyed means a nation destroyed nation can be controlled sorry not controlled but uh, can be managed efficiently only with the knowledge and intellect and that's why think tanks intellectuals the great uh, minds like bureaucrats and all these people are very much important in a country but when in a country politicians become the most important people then nobody can save that country and that we have seen uh, uh, evidently here okay or everywhere we see the talks of politicians their ways their moves and the way the aggressive ways are being promoted the way they are uh, given support to this is a crisis of intellect and knowledge in this country so that's why we need to focus on this issue academic institutions are being weakened today and academics themselves lose sight of the standards of excellence internal to the practice of research and teaching that thing is not even there really because the research the debates the discussion these things are controlled they are fixed in a framework they are fixed in a uh, mold there people are directed to discuss limited topics and they are uh, there are restrictions on on their uh, on their seminars and all so these kind of uh, uh, issues are so vital to the universities and the opinion making but that is restricted means your knowledge is restricted and a restricted knowledge is disastrous restricted knowledge is not a knowledge okay there was no no restriction on the uh, ancient thinkers of this country and that's why they came up with these great uh, these great uh, uh, documents like vedas uh, and all these uh, uh, writings and these uh, poems and all or whatever material we have in the name of ancient history great knowledge and logical and scientific issues are there but what we preach today we preach blind thinking today and that's really dangerous and that's why it's a perilous state of knowledge uh, uh, knowledge uh, uh, ecosystem and the academic freedom and wider societal malaise is there why because merit based institutions were being converted to the little fiefdoms we have seen fiefdoms here because if you control the uh, universities and institutions uh, by appointing their selective people there vcs are all selective people they are supporting to particular ideology today and it is under the power of the authorities and the government so they choose their own people we have seen this thing evidently always we see that every government does that but today it is happening with so much intensity that uh, uh, things are uh, really concerning and here only those ideas are uploaded which are uh, uh, which are provocating which are aggressive and which are suiting to the frustrated youth so that's why it's a perilous state and it is the responsibility of the state to promote the right knowledge in the right ways in the universities but they are uh, deli uh, deliberating those issues and that's why it's a big concern and the illiberal communities people are becoming so intolerant that they will support every aggressive way which is targeting the secular features which is targeting the freedom which is targeting the liberal issues and always they will say that uh, you did not say something when that thing happened they must understand if they are talking about some issue then it's okay they are talking about something which is also wrong both things are wrong whatever you are putting though that was also wrong whatever i am saying that is also wrong 
so we should talk about both i'm talking about this you talk about that and let's bring solutions to both but here there is division that is intentionally created between the people and that's why people instead of asking questions to the authorities they will ask question to each other because there are divisions they see the other person with a with some with some opinion with some judgment with some hate so they will ask question to each other they are not asking question to authorities or these politicians and that is the case of intellectual crisis because people are uh, directed and they are brainwashed to behave in this way by these news media houses they have created these divisions and they have created those kind of uh, 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 labels like gangs uh, uh, that uh, secular gang that uh, award winning gang and these kind of words urban nexus urban maoist these kind of intentionally created words they are being popularized by the system even the home minister in the parliament there uh, he is talking about the urban maoist issue and that is totally a trendy issue on twitter how you can quote that thing in the policy making but they are doing that intentionally so that is the intellectual crisis in this country that people are not able to recognize these divisive methods and these impositions of the cultures on the youth and in the universities and all so that's why the academia is under a lot of stress and the real academia who is free who is talking about the crucial uh, negative consequences and they are alarming uh, the people that be aware otherwise we will have a crisis in the near future economy is uh, heading towards a lot of crises and today they say that we will not tell you any uh, uh, information uh, directly you will have to give an application and there will be no conference no press conference uh, freely in the uh, finance ministry so these kind of directions we have today these things are in front of us symptoms are there in front of us where for sure we may have a crisis in the future but these things are raised by some intellectual minds but those people are targeted very easily by because people think that these are the uh, agenda makers and the news media houses and those uh, uh, fraud thinkers they are the real intellectuals so that's why they are supporting their aggressive ways and they are supporting their uh, revenge politics and they are not talking about the real solution and the real ways of the knowledge because no real scholar in this world will talk about taking revenge on the basis of history or they will not talk about the uh, uh, talk about some glorious past even europe has uh, all the talks of glory, glorious past in the medieval times or something like that but when the these scientific revolutions that happened then they attack these scientific minds why because they were opposing their uh, their uh, so called glorifying messages about the history so that's why always when some frauds are dominating the minds then they will attack the academia first they will attack the intellectual uh, uh, minds first and they will bring that perilous state to the academia and the intellectualism so that's the and it is all the case that we are observing is over idealized uh, academia and which automatically becomes politically indoctrinated because politics is run on uh, some ideologies some connection is always there that's a different thing that all politicians are behaving in the same way after they are elected but in the starting they go with some ideologies and in the way when they want to survive later when they are elected then they talk about those ideologies they this 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 talk about that and uh, they try to make people weak in their intellect so that they can easily control their minds because an enlightened mind is never a controlled mind nobody can control an enlightened mind that person is a self driving person and that can understand anything that can analyze any situation but when you block all the ways to develop intellect and knowledge then people are so weak and they are never an enlightened mind and they are easily controlled by any other quack there so that's the case and here uh, as i explained to you the corporate corporatization of academia that's the biggest danger today we have seen the example of institute of uh, eminence issue where big corporate houses they are establishing institutions and they are supported by the government heavily financial support all kinds of supports support will be will be there 
and we all know the nexus of politicians and the corporateers election funding is the biggest reason they do election funding during elections and after elections they will make policies according to these corporate houses so when they will establish these institutions and all then they will have clear directions that never go against the government never criticize the government and never discuss anything anything that is objectionable and bring those uh, sensitive issues where people cannot tell much and preach your ideologies so this will uh, be the environment very soon and uh, that's why we have seen that JNU like institutions are mocked like hell and they are labeled as a terrorist organizations and uh, so prestigious organizations which are always held by the foreign institutions why because foreign institutions they embrace the real scientists real scholars and all and these are not foolish people they are great minds and they know where the quality lies and that's why they hail JNU like institutions but it is mocked in our country and it is said that uh, uh, it is uh, embracing terrorists and all we have many many ministers who were uh, uh, the students of JNU even they are uh, talking uh, about the JNU in this way so that is the crisis like situation and this is the biggest and most dangerous type of crisis in our country where knowledge dies a nation dies thanks a lot keep watching it was a mixing